We can often use the techniques that we use to solve linear equations to solve other kinds of equations as well. In particular, many rational equations can be solved using uh, these techniques with a little bit of a modification. So a rational equation is an equation where one or both of the expressions involved are rational expressions. So as an example, let's look at the rational equation uh, 4 over x minus 3 equals 2. Now this is a rational equation because the left-hand expression here is a rational expression. In particular, you'll notice that it includes x in the denominator. Now there are two big takeaways, uh, two big ideas that we need to keep in mind when we look at rational equations. The first idea is that we can't solve for x if it's in the denominator. And therefore, our first task when working with rational equations is usually to get all of the x's, all of the variables, out of the denominator. Now we're going to do that by taking advantage of the general algebraic principle that we can multiply or divide both sides of an equation by anything we want. In particular, we can multiply or divide both sides of an equation by an expression and not just a number. So uh, the strategy when working with ra rational expressions is usually to multiply both sides of the equation by the least common denominator of all of the rational expressions in the equation. Now remember that rational expressions uh, can have least common denominators just like fractions can. And uh, in the case that we're working with rational expressions, those least common denominators will be expressions involving a variable. In our example here, this is a pretty simple example where we only have one rational expression, only one fraction, and only one denominator, which means that the least common denominator is just that single denominator that appears, the x minus 3. So we're going to try multiplying both sides of the equation by the least common denominator. Now, this is something that we may try in lots of situations, and sometimes it may work and sometimes it won't. This is another tool that we have in our toolbox to try to solve equations. Let's see what happens when we try it here. So if we have 4 over x minus 3 equals 2, we can multiply both sides of this equation by x minus 3 and get a new equation which has the same solution set as the original, as long as the thing we're multiplying by isn't 0. Now we're going to come back to this. There, it turns out we're going to be able to uh, make sure that we haven't made a mistake there um, by coming back and checking things at the end. Let's, uh, let's just continue on for the moment and let's try multiplying these things together. Now once again, I want to treat this factor that I'm multiplying by, the x minus 3, as x minus 3 over 1 so that we can see how the cancellation works very clearly. You'll notice that in the multiplication on the left, we've got an x minus 3 factor in the numerator and an x minus 3 factor in the denominator, which are exactly going to cancel each other out. Which means that on the left, this whole product simplifies to just being 4. And on the other side of the equation, we've got 2 times x minus 3. So we can distribute that 2 through and write this as 4 equals 2x plus 6. Now, of course, at this point, this is a very simple linear equation. We know how to handle this. We've done this a few times now. So we can go and continue solving for x. We've got, we can add 6 to both sides. 
in order to cancel out the negative 6, get 10 equals 2x. Uh, and then from the 10 equals 2x, we can divide both sides of the equation by 2 and arrive at 5 equals x. So the solution is 5. The solution to our simple equation is 5, and that's equivalent to the first equation that we started with. Assuming, again, that we haven't made a mistake by, multi by accidentally multiplying by 0 when we went through the multiplication process. Now, we don't have to um, keep track of anything as we're going through. We can actually go through the whole process and just behave as though we can multiply both sides of the equation by anything we want uh, whenever, we, uh, whenever we want. That's fine. But what we always need to do, we always need to check our answers uh, when working with rational expressions or rational equations, I should say. We always need to check our work. So for this, we'll want to check whether this equation is true by plugging in the number five that we believe is the solution to the original equation and seeing whether we get a true statement out of this. So we're going to plug in five and we're going to get four over 5 minus 3 equals 2. Now, to get here, I'm starting with the very original equation. This is where you need to start. And you need to come down and plug in the solution that you believe that you found. And we get 4 over 5 minus 3 equals 2. And we check to see whether this is a true statement. Well, it turns out it is, because 5 minus 3 is, of course, just 2. 4 divided by 2 is in fact equal to 2, and so that checks. So uh, 5 is indeed a solution. Because when we plugged 5 in, we got a true statement when we plugged it into the original equation. So this is the basic idea behind solving rational equations. There are really only two things that you need to remember. is and that's first, we need to multiply both sides by the least common denominator in order to get all of the variables out of the denominators. And second, we need to check our answers. And this uh, last step is actually essential. And let's see why with another example. Let's try to solve 2 over x plus 2 equals 3 minus x over x plus 2. So here's another equation. It's a little bit more complicated. We now have rational expressions both on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side. Now, what is nice about this one is that both of the fractions involved, both the rational expressions involved, have the same denominator. They have the same denominator of x plus 2, which means the least common denominator is x plus 2. It's just x plus 2. So we can take x plus 2 and multiply it on both sides of this equation to get a new equation which has the same solution set as the original. Now remember that when uh, that we do have to distribute this x plus 2 through. And so in uh, next step, I'll have something like x plus 2 over 1 times 2 over x plus 2 equals 3 times x plus 2 minus x over x plus 2 times x plus 2. And again, I'll write that as x plus 2 over 1. Now we'll cancel where we can. So in the first term, I've got an x plus 2 on the top, an x plus 2 on the bottom. Those can cancel. Then I've got an x plus 2 and an x plus 2 that can cancel on the far right. And when we simplify everything down, we get 2 equals 
3 times x plus 2 minus x. And this is a linear equation again. We can solve this via our normal methods. So 2 is equal to 3x plus 6 minus x, just um, distributing the 3 through. And so we'll get 2 is equal to 2x plus 6. Subtract 6 from both sides, get negative 4 is equal to 2x. Get negative 4 is equal to 2x. We'll divide both sides by 2 again, and get negative 2 equals x. And so this is our potential solution. What we can say right now is that if any number is a solution to this equation, it has to be negative 2. Certainly no other number could possibly make this equation true, but we do have to check whether this one actually does. So let's check. If we plug negative 2 in, then we'll get 2 over negative 2 plus 2 equals 3 minus negative 2 over negative 2 plus 2. And oh, once again, we're going back and plugging this into the very original equation, the equation we started with before we did any sort of simplification or algebra on it at all. We always need to go back all the way to the beginning. But now we can see that there's a problem. The problem here is that this denominator is zero. Uh, the denominator of this left-hand fraction over here is equal to zero, and anything over zero, this whole fraction here, is undefined. And similarly, we get a similar sort of problem over here. This is also undefined. Uh, but an undefined thing can't actually be equal to anything. The equal sign only talks about equality between numbers. And so an undefined thing can't be equal to anything else, even something else that's undefined. So any number that would make your original equation have undefined in one of its expressions can never be a solution. So this means that negative 2 is not a solution to the original equation because if we go back and plug it into the original equation, we don't get a true statement. We get an undefined on one side and an undefined can't be equal to anything. So negative 2 is not a solution to this equation, but the, that was our only potential solution that we came up with. So we got a single potential solution of negative 2. Turned out that negative 2 wasn't a solution at the end of the day. And so our answer to the original problem is that this equation has no solution. There is no number at all that you could plug into this equation that would make it true. This statement that 2 over x plus 2 equals 3 minus x over x plus 2 is always false, no matter what you plug in for x. So that's why you absolutely need to check your work. Notice that we only realized that there was a problem once we went back to check things in the, in the last step. We can't stop once we found that negative 2. If we just got there and said, oh, the answer is negative 2, we would be wrong and we would um, not be able to, uh, to answer the question correctly. Negative 2 does not make sense as a potential answer to the original problem, and so um, we have to say that this problem has no solutions at all. Okay, so uh, we just Let's just do one more example where we see what happens when the rational equation has um, a more complicated least common denominator that we have to uh, that we have to work with. Uh, 
All right, so let's look at the equation uh, 1 over x plus 3 minus 2 over x squared plus 5x plus 6 is equal to, uh, sorry, is equal to 3 over x plus 2. Now this is definitely more complicated than what we've seen before. Before, all of our denominators were just linear equations. They were just x plus or minus something. And now we've got this uh, denominator, uh, with the, which is degree 2 in the middle here. We can sometimes still apply the same techniques that we did before, although sometimes we will have to move to more complex techniques. Uh, but the first step that we need to work on here is factoring. So first, we factor each denominator. We need to do that first before we can figure out what the least common denominator is. Now, the first term just has a denominator of x plus 3. That doesn't factor any further. The second term has a denominator that does factor. Now, x squared plus 5x plus 6 factors. Remember when we've got a trinomial like this, where the leading coefficient is 1, so there's no visible coefficient on the x squared. We're looking for two numbers that add up to equal the coefficient of x and multiply to equal the constant term over here. So we need two numbers that add up to equal 5, multiply to equal 6, 3 and 2 do that. So in fact, x plus 3 and x plus 2 are the factors that make up the denominator of that middle term. So now we can look at this equation, look at all the rational expressions involved and ask, all right, what's the least common denominator of these rational expressions? And so remember that the strategy here is we want to say for each factor that appears in a denominator, we want to include the highest power of that uh, of that factor which appears so in this case we've got two unique factors that appear in all of the denominators together. We have an x plus 3 and we've got an x plus 2, which means we're going to need to include both of those. Now, if either of these factors appeared with a power higher than 1 in any of our denominators, we would need to include a uh, power of that denominator that's as high as the highest such power that appears. So for example, and this is not the problem that we are doing, but if for instance, x plus three was squared in uh, the middle term, and let's say x plus two was raised to the seventh over here, then we would look at the x plus three term, the x plus three factor, and say, all right, what's the highest power of x plus 3 that appears anywhere in a denominator. And we can we would say that, whoa, the highest power of x plus 3 that appears is 2. And then we would say, what's the highest power of x plus 2 that appears anywhere? And in this case, the highest power would be 7. And when we do that, when we've run through all of the factors and listed the highest power that any of them have in any denominators, that will give us our least common denominator. Now, that's just as a quick review. You can see more uh, details of this in the Chapter 0 uh, uh, review in the ebook. Uh, for us, for this example, we aren't dealing with any of these. We've just got single powers on all of our factors. And so our least common denominator is, in fact, exactly x plus 3 times 
x plus 2. And so that's what we're going to multiply on both sides. We're going to take x plus 3 and x plus 2 and multiply it by the left hand side and by the right hand side. And why can we do this? Well, it's because we can multiply by anything we want on both sides of an equation whenever we want. So in particular, if it's going to be useful for us to multiply by x plus 3 times x plus 2, and it is, then we can do that. All right, make sure and distribute. So on the left here, we'll get x plus 3 times x plus 2 times 1 over x plus 3. That's what we get when we multiply by the first term and then minus x plus 3 times x plus 2 times 2 over x plus 3 times x plus 2. And that equals uh, x plus 3 times x plus 2 times 3 over x plus 2. Pardon me for uh, squishing things a bit. But things are going to get simple here because we're going to cancel a bunch of stuff. So in our first term, notice that we have an x plus 3 in the denominator and an x plus 3 in the numerator. And so we can cancel both of those. And then in the second term, well, we have lots of things that are the same. So x plus 3 appears in the numerator and denominator x plus 2 also appears in the numerator and denominator. And then over on the right hand side of the equation we have an x plus 2 in the numerator and an x plus 2 in the denominator and those cancel out as well. And so once we've annihilated all these things we can see what we're left with. So the first term, everything's canceled except an x plus 2 in the numerator. In the second term, a 2 is left over in the numerator. And on the right, we have an x plus 3 times 3 left. And all the denominators are just 1. So uh, that's all we need to do here. Uh, we can simplify both sides and get uh, x equals 3x plus 9. Let's finish this up here. We have x equals 3x plus 9. I'll go ahead and subtract 3x from both sides to get negative 2x equals 9 and then divide both sides by negative 2. And once I cancel these, we get that x is equal to negative 9 halves. So uh, once again, we got to the point where uh, we have just a single possible solution. So negative 9 halves is our potential solution. Now, to check this uh, the way that we did before, we would have to go back and plug this into the original equation, uh, which would frankly be a bit of a pain because this x is negative 9 halves. It's a fraction. It's going to create a lot of fractions here. Now we can do that and it's, uh, it's good to do that. Uh, however, it turns out there is a little bit of a of shortcut that we can take in this particular scenario when we're working with rational, uh, uh, rational equations like this. Now, this shortcut won't catch any errors that you've made during the process. The other one will. The, the method of checking where we go back and plug in our answer into the, into the original equation, that'll catch all your, um, all your mistakes, near, or nearly all your mistakes. If you made a mistake during computation, something like this, um, 
that'll usually catch it. Uh, however, the shortcut that I'm about to show you won't. It'll just see whether we've had the situation like we had last time where we thought we had a solution, but it turned out we didn't because it made the denominator equal to zero. So if negative nine halves doesn't make the denominator zero, it is a solution. So this is, um, this is what I'll call a shortcut. And you should only use this if you are 100% confident that you've done all your arithmetic inside correctly, which is usually not the case. Um, even, even for me, uh, a lot of times I have the possibility of making a mistake with, um, with some of my arithmetic and uh, just getting something wrong. Uh, and so you should only use this if you are very short on time or if you are completely confident th that your arithmetic has been correct. Uh, however, we can go and we can check that negative nine halves won't make any of the denominators in our rational expressions zero. And so uh, because of that, that means nine halves, it, a negative nine halves is a solution. So our solution to this equation is x equals negative nine halves. Uh, and that's how you can solve some rational equations using the techniques that we used for linear equations. Basically by turning those rational equations into linear equations, which we know how to solve using our other methods.